Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning into The RW. This is your host, Brandon Macy, and I'm so glad to have with me one of my, I want, I would say long-term friends, but we haven't been friends for that long, but one of my friends, Nick Nielsen, the associate pastor at Lakewood. Man, it's so good to have you on this morning. It's an honor, man. You look good today. Well, thank you. Bright and early. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I had to get up really early. I had to get that cream under the eyes, <laughs> make sure the, the Do you have a facial there. routine? I don't, don't have, lie. I really don't have a facial routine. The only thing that I do, you guys had no idea we were going to get into we're this. We're going straight, straight to the important stuff. The, the only thing that I do is I do use lotion on my face um, every day. So that is my routine. Um, I I have committed to a facial routine. Have you? Yeah, I have. Well, then after this is, the, after the podcast, you need to let me in on the on the facial okay. secrets. Okay, I because will. Because we're we're basically the same age, yep. right? You're a little I, bit. I, I just turned forty, bro. Okay, well, you're, I'm older than you. Oh, so I mean, you can see it here it's coming in a little. You can see same it here. spots for me. I've got a lot right here. Yeah, I've, well, that's where the wisdom comes in first. <laughs> So, yeah, it's probably time that I should start a facial routine, well, to be I, honest. My daughter's just full on with it. She's just turned that 14. Yeah. So she's like, Dad, you need to put this on. You need to put this cream yeah. on. Do you need to put this under you your don't eyes? You want the crow's feet, Dad. Yeah. yeah. So she's got me She got me on it. So well, I've never shared that publicly before. So this is, I mean, that's what this podcast routine. is about. I'm committed. This, this podcast is about just reaching in and Going pulling there. that stuff out, Go. man. <laughs> this stuff that's really going to impact lives long term. Um, uh, so yeah, but let me in on those tips because I gotcha. uh, you know I want to I want to be forever young. Okay, we'll do um, it. No one one of the reasons I wanted to have you on here, and it's really crazy the the way you and I connected. I first met you through Torin. Um, at my sister's house, I think was the first time we ever met. Yeah, and just kind of, hey man, hey, right. man, you know that right. kind of deal. Figured out your father-in-law lived in the apartments that I live in, <laughs> and so we kind of connected that way. Yeah, and then uh, just kind of struck up a friendship, man. Yeah. yeah, and and honestly, I've really enjoyed the friendship. You know, Likewise. with COVID, it's been weird. Because we had some time off where we were fishing and Heck like yeah. hanging out, getting to do outdoor stuff. And then all of a sudden, now we're back full swing and things have gotten busy. We so. don't get to fish. We don't get to we fish. We get to work, dude. And I mean, th- here's the thing. The the start of every good ministry started out fishing. <laughs> I mean, let's be Ooh. honest. Let's mm. be honest. Mm. You know, That's when, when, when God went and looked, when Jesus went and looked for men to pick, he said, I want guys that are fishing. Oof. And so Ooh. this is something I've used many times, <laughs> as you can tell. I've been prepared with that comeback um, that that God uses fishermen, you know. And we're we. What about guys who catch gators? Because I don't know if you want to sh- share what happened this I summer. Mean, I mean, I'm up for a little sharing of illegal activities. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's legal to catch gators. We were but actually, we, did, we didn't catch and release. We were protecting the community. Yeah. Is what we were doing. That's true. That's true. That's, that's we were, what we're about. We were making the community yeah. aware there was a 12 foot <laughs> gator in a very, um, very populated area with, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we brought attention to the gator and then animal services came. The funny thing was, it couldn't have been what two weeks after I hooked into that gator, and I've I've later found out that that Nick has shared this video with many people. I have, which I'm surprised has not got me arrested uh, so yeah. far. Yeah, but uh, we were there fishing for bit for bass. We were fishing real. for you bass, know, and all of a sudden a gator jumps on your line. Gator jumps on. I mean, and we may have, you yeah. know, I, I mean, we're enticed not gonna, it a little. Yeah, we're not going to confirm or deny that, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, we was, won't ask any of our kids either. No, no, what, because what our kids were day. running around with about a you know ten, twelve foot gator uh, there, and again a highly populated area. But it was a good time. I'll have to say though, I've never enjoyed fishing more <laughs> than I have this summer. Then it was it was a our blast. boys getting together. Yeah, you and I. Yeah. I mean, even coming to Houston. So I've been in Houston fourteen, almost fourteen years. Okay. And even before I came here, I didn't fish really at all. Yeah. And so yeah. then we live by a bayou. Denver wants to start fishing. And then I got to tell you this story. It's so funny. Oh, tell it. First time we went fishing, we were out at the bayou and I bring some live worms, right? 
and he's probably four or five years old. We're fishing. We're just sitting on the bayou, <clears throat> and I'm just hoping like this is something we can do together. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. I'm kind of getting into it. Yeah, we'll just this is a hobby. We're going to do the rest of our sure. lives together. So we're fishing, and it's like cast after cast. He keeps losing his his live live worm. So yeah. every time he brings it up, I'm rebating. I'm rebating, and we catch nothing. No bites. Nothing. It was like the worst experience ever. And we get in the car. And we're driving back, and I'm like, man. He's going to hate fishing. This isn't going to work. Yeah. And I look over. I said, Denver, what would you think today? You know, did you have a good time? And he looks back dead serious. And he goes, Dad, I love drowning worms with you. <laughs> he thought that was the he thought that was the point the whole time. Yeah, we're just drowning worms. He loved drowning worms. That's hilarious. And I lost it. That's I, hilarious. And I, I didn't really, I'm like, I didn't have the heart in that moment to tell him because he had a great time. So that's not so the let's, object. That's of not fishing. the object of the game. But that's that'll hilarious. preach. You that'll know, preach. That will. No, had, and, and knowing you, you'll turn that into an uh, object I have. lesson. I I've used it. Okay, a few times. We were just talking about a, a pastor that we all know and is going to remain nameless. Okay, but took the object lesson to the next level. I mean, had a boat on his platform. Oh my gosh! In the water. Did you see yeah, this? Yeah, created. Yes, like you a literally pond. saw this. It was raining. It was literally <laughs> raining, and I, I was like, I can't wait to tell Nick he's got to. I got to up take, it. I got to. I got to. You got to up the okay, ante. Okay. Um. No, but you know what? In all seriousness, I, I have I have watched a lot of your messages, and just recently, uh, watched the one of planting the seed mm -hmm. in the soil, mm -hmm. and I'm like, how does this guy? Every message come up it's with every a perfect object lesson. Like he's got full door frames on the <laughs> on the platform. He's got it all. I, I I just to me I learn better when something yeah. is visual. Yeah, and I also think like I love, you know, I just I I love the creativity behind it. I think yeah. for me it keeps things fresh, telling the same truth just in a new, fresh way yeah. for people yeah. who may be new in their faith or have heard something a million times. But hey, how about you see this Psalm 92, 13, planted right. in the house of the Lord verse different? How can we make this come alive to people? And we got an awesome team, bro. Like, that, like it's, it's awesome. The collaboration with our, our, you know, our service producers, you know, our assistants. I, I'm like, I, I need a pot that I can see the roots underneath. Yeah, like, yeah. Can, what can you guys do? And, yeah. and they, out of nowhere, they pull up this unbelievable- That's awesome. Six foot pot that you can yeah. rotate that's like clear. Oh, it's it was just, great. When yeah. I saw it, I was yeah. like, man, it's, that's amazing. So it's credit to our team. They're next level. And, and you know, here all this time, I thought you were putting those things together. Really? So it's, yeah, it brings me down Sorry. a little bit. Sorry. It brings man. me down a little bit. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but seriously- uh, I like that because I mean we we say that the the word of God is the living word of God, and to me that does make it come alive mm. and make it more real to people, and make it correlate. Yeah. Um. I mean the basketball analogy. I mean all these things. Um. And you can tell that I've been checking these things out. I man. have. I mean, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm watching. I'm flattered, them. dude. The funniest thing was, you know, Barrett. Uh, yeah. So so Barrett and Denver are real close yes. in age. Yeah. Barrett's they're a little buddies. bit older. Yeah, they're buddies. They're buddies. And Barrett, you know, he met you, didn't know what you did, who you were, really. We're just all hanging out. You know, he's just like, hey, we're fishing. That's all I care mm -hmm, about. Mm -hmm. And so I I had pulled up one of your messages when, when they were with me, and I was like, hey, come here. I was like, look. I was like, this is, this is Mr. Nick right here, you know. <laughs> and he comes over there, and he's like, hey. He's like, he's a good preacher. <laughs> So, so remember, Done. I text you. Remember, I we've arrived, baby. I, I text you. And you were like, "That's all the approval That's I, all I need right there." That's all I need. So, you know, I mean, you made you made a huge <laughs> impact on him, and uh, and you know, he's a pretty tough that, critic. That's, so, if you've won him like, over, Dad, are you sure that's the same guy? Yeah, if you've won him, the over. the guy that's catching the gator over here, this meathead, <laughs> that's him. So if you've won him over, man, you've done a lot. Your boys are awesome. Your kids uh, are amazing. Man, your your kids too. And I, I'm glad that we've had the opportunity to hang out and and do all that stuff, go to the house and see the pool yep. being built and all the fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about a little bit is kind of how you got into ministry. I mean, th this is what I think a lot of people miss out on is they see you where you are and they don't see all the steps that 
takes place to get right. you where you are. I mean, you didn't just wake up one day and say, I think I'll be the associate pastor right. at, you know, one of the largest churches in the world. Um, it was a journey to get there, you know, bumps, scrapes, you know, Definitely. Hey, I, th- I think I'm going to go this way. Well, it doesn't look like this is the right thing. Right. So I wanted you to maybe tell a little bit yeah. about that, how your journey into ministry kind of got started. Yeah. So I didn't grow up in the church. My parents were divorced when I was three. Okay. So I didn't have any sort of faith background. My dad would take us to church on Easter. Yeah. That was like the extent of it to yeah. kind of check off the box, you know, let's right. go to Easter. And I just sleep. I got it in this year. You know, year. Yeah, yeah. I just, t- growing up church was the context that I was in, though my dad did his best because he wasn't taught any different either. Right. So he just kind of followed suit, take us to Easter, tried his best to expose us to some idea of faith, say our prayers occasionally before bed. Right. Right. Um, but just didn't live it, didn't embrace it, you know, got into high school, kind of did my own thing, you know, chase popularity, all that stuff. And my my summer before my senior year, a friend of mine invited me to church, uh, like a youth camp. Yeah. And I was 17. Um, he's like, man, there's good looking girls and we can play basketball. And I'm like, I'm in. Let's uh, yeah, go. Yeah. But, you know, where are we I going? I don't care I'm where in. you're going. Yeah. So he, he like conned me into going and... I went and just, I remember vividly, June 18th, 1998, uh, just a, like a moment where God, I don't remember the message. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember really a whole lot about the night other than I knew just the, the love of God just gripped my, my life yeah. and changed me. Next day, I got water baptized in the lake there, and it was just full on. Like, yeah. I just was like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go all in yeah. and driving back from that, realizing I'm coming back to a very like real, um, pivot, you know, that I need to make right. Friendship circles, walking away from different things. My family didn't understand. I say all that to say, because my road to ministry was very quick. I got back from that camp and, uh, tried to explain it the best I could to my family. Um, and they didn't really understand initially, but I finished off my senior year and I was going to go play football in college, and I had a verbal commitment to play football already, yeah. locked in. Um, went into my senior year, ended up tearing my ACL, and during that process of rehab, still with the ability, and man, I just, still with the opportunity to play at this university, <clears throat> but I just felt like during that injury and that rehab, God began to shift my heart. Yeah. And... It's one of those things where hindsight, you look back and you go, man, I thank God that that, that moment took place, right. that hardship. Right. Because it was, I mean, it wrecked me in oh, a moment. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, it's like, man, I just gave my, my life to God. Over. Yeah. And now I got this, like, God, what is the deal? You yeah. know, I just walked away from everything as far as relationally. Right. Took a lot of, you know, stuff from my family, from friends. And now this, a lot of questions, but at the same time, just a lot of soul searching as it relates to my purpose. You know, God, yeah. what do you really um, want from me? What do you really, what have you made me to do? This is what I want to do, but what am I made to do? Well, and, and let, let me say this. Yeah. I think I think a lot of times when things like that happen in our lives, we, we look at it like it's a setback. Right. You know, like, man, this is a setback. When when really it's God setting us up for something great. Totally. And And, you know, to be able to look back on that, you know, to me, it's encouraging because I think when we go through a situation like this, and I told somebody this recently, you know, you get a situation, you get something close enough to your eye, you can take a dime, you can block out the sun. Sometimes we get things so close to us like this, where it's happening to you, where it's like, this is my future forever. It's so close to you that you can't even see the bigger picture of what's happening. Right. You get that dime way out here, right? Then the sun just shines as bright as it ever yeah. will. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's easy for us to take those things and go, man, this is just so close to me. I can't see around it. I can't see what God's doing. Yeah. But at those times we got to trust and say, okay, God, what are you trying to teach me exactly in this situation? What are you trying to teach me in this season? And obviously it was a good thing. Oh man. And, and I was so young too in my faith. So for me, it was by the grace of God. I just didn't just pull the plug, pull the yeah, plug, yeah. and say, "This is I'm not doing this. Yeah. This is crazy." Yeah. Um, but I just 
just step just kept leaning into my faith i had good people around me and i think it's a it's a testament to environment and healthy relationships that i kind of try to immerse myself in um people that would just continue to speak faith into my life you know hang on god's got something good god is going god is working he is going to turn this around for your good right and as a young believer it was hard to realize and understand but over a series of like nine months my heart just began to shift towards ministry towards a desire to be a pastor and i and i never really you know i didn't grow up seeing pastors i just had this desire planted in me that was probably in your best interest (laughs) because you know, on the flip side of that, one of the things that ha- that that I battled with is I saw what pastors mm. go through. Gotcha. So for me, it was like when I started feeling God, you know, pulling on me. It was like I don't want that. Yeah. Like I've seen that my, you know, my parents would pour all this into people, only for people to just turn around and be like, "Yeah, whatever. I'm going to go over here to yeah. this church." Or the hard parts of it. The hard parts of it. And and I'm not saying it's all right. hard. Right. But I'm saying you know this that living in the glass house, all of these things that come with ministry, uh, you know, that was probably in, in your advantage at the moment true. that you didn't know yes, true. All, all of yep. the, all of the challenges. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? And I, and I felt like I just, you know, I felt like I just knew that I knew, I remember a very distinct moment where I just said, okay, this is what I'm going to pursue, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I remember telling my, at the time that the pastor of my church, you know, some of my leaders that were praying for me and praying for my future, you know, Hey, this is what I feel like doing The there was a local, an internship at the local church and a leadership Institute that were training people to be pastors. Okay. And so that was what I really felt committed to do. And I remember telling my dad and he's like, you're going to what? Yeah. You're going to be a priest. Yeah. Like he legit, that was his faith framework. Right. Was, right. You're going to be a priest. Like, you're not going to have kids or nothing. I'm like, yeah. no, dad, I'm going to be a pastor. Yeah. I'm going to get married. Yeah. I can have kids. We have a lot more freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, just didn't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And so to walk away from football to do this just didn't make sense to him. Now, right. I mean, my dad is like extremely proud, watches every message, that's very great, engaged man. online, lives yeah. in Wisconsin. So God's worked all things out, but that's kind of my journey to get into it in a nutshell. Um, but it is, the biggest thing is, what I thought was a major hindrance and setback was actually God saying, no, I'm going to push pause on this yeah. and allow this is, I'm going to allow this to happen and give you the grace to walk through it. Cause I got something better for you. Yeah. I have a new, you know, a different right. route, right. different plan for your life that you're unaware of. Just trust me. And hindsight, I can go, thank God for right. the injury. Right. That, you know, Absolutely. just like you were saying. Well, and, and I, and I want you to talk about this too, because you know you're in a very interesting spot you know obviously like i said you didn't always start out being an associate pastor you know you're a young adult pastor uh you what did you do before that at lakewood you, youth you, you were i've doing, been in okay. the youth and young adult world the whole so you've been doing that the whole time yep so but now as the associate pastor basically you know right hand to again one of one of the most uh prominent pastors in the world mm-hmm. i mean not just the united states but you and I have had some talks one on one, and you said some things that really impressed me, and I, I think it can be a help to other guys that are in similar situations that you're in. Is you recognize that the place that God has called you is to back up the the man mm-hmm. of God that you're working mm-hmm. with, and I think this is a very difficult place for a lot of guys. I think a lot of guys have have uh intentions of hey one day i'm gonna be uh hey i you know um especially if you've been in the business world and you're used to just hey i'm climbing up that ladder i'll do anything i can do to get up that ladder you see that creep into the church world at times where guys are just like no i gotta move up i gotta move up i gotta move up the thing that i appreciate you about you and we've talked about this is that you do all things to reflect back yeah. to Pastor Osteen. Mm-hmm. Um, I want you to talk about that and and maybe some of the principles that you've just put into action when it comes to that. Because 
to me, there are a few people that I've talked to that have that have done a better job mm. at doing that than you. And I mean that. Yeah, I appreciate uh, that. You, you, you've done an amazing job doing that. And when I talk to you about things, you always say, well, I do this because this is the vision of yeah. pastor and, and I want to carry that out yeah. and make sure that gets that gets yeah. done. Yeah, I, th- I feel like, and I appreciate you saying that. I mean, I feel like I've learned through mistakes too sure. throughout the yeah. journey, you know, where... You know, I felt like God has taught me some hard lessons early on when I was in ministry where I didn't get that picture, Yeah, you know, or I was, I was trying to not necessarily pushing from our own thing, but like you said, pursuing the next, pursuing the next, yeah. you know, promotion or getting into a season where my motives got off and God checked me. And so for me, it was I've, I've kind of gone through some circumstances early on that really helped me. God just really humbled me and yeah. just said, if you will serve the bigger vision, like it's, you know, if you'll serve someone else's dream, I'm going to, I'm going to make all your dreams that you have in your heart come to pass. See that now what you just said is that's good. If you serve someone else's dream, then yeah. I'll, may, I'll help your dream to come true. I, I think that's, I think that's tough. And I, and I automatically think about, uh, think about it was it was Samuel, right? That that God spoke out and said something to him. He goes to his master and says, "What do I do yeah. right now?" Yeah, and he goes, "Well, you need to say, speak thy servant heareth." The next day, the Bible says that after God spoke to him, the next day, the Bible says he goes about his regular duties. So he's still fulfilling the vision, even though God is speaking something into his heart. He's still going. I got to go and open the doors of the temple. I got to go to do these all these menial tasks. So he was basically doing exactly what you said. Mm. He was fulfilling his menial deeds. Yeah. He was fulfilling the vision of someone else. Yeah. And God ended up using him in a mighty way because of that. Yep. I jo- Joseph to me has been also another story that has helped me. I mean, when I when I see God plant in him something significant at a young age. Right. And then all of these other like random jobs, you yeah. know, like, yeah. I mean, not, not only like, does he start, does it start bad with right. a pit, but he's not then in jail. Then he's a cup bearer. Then he's like helping the cook. Then he's like an assistant. It's like waitress to all you know, waiter. Wait, yeah. you know what I mean? All of these jobs yeah. that we would compare yeah. to today as like stepping stone jobs or whatever. Um, no offense to anyone, waiter, being a waiter or hey, waitress, I've been but a waiter. we're same, a bus boy, everything. <laughs> yeah, I've done so, it all. So, but to me, I feel like, his his journey to his ultimate dream was really spent helping people realize theirs and i think that's the key that's good is whose dream are you building right now yeah you know i we all have things in our hearts we want to go after we all want things we want to accomplish joseph had that deep in his heart but the journey god took him to it the way and the path was helping other people realize theirs i mean even the moment before everything shifted yeah. and he got put into a position of power, he was literally interpreting a dream. Yeah, yeah. That was the key yeah. that unlocked yeah. the door. It couldn't be clearer. I mean, it's like yeah. you literally are helping someone realize their dream. Yeah. And that's what opened the door for you to step into your yeah, dream. That's, that's that's an awesome concept. And And he could have said, because his first dream was the fact that his brothers were bowing down to him. That was the very first dream he had. Uh, dumbest idea ever to go tell your brothers that, by the way. <laughs> but, note to self. But, yeah, note to self. <laughs> uh, but but he could have all throughout gone, this is below me. Yeah. You know, like yeah. God showed me that everybody's going to bow to me, but he never did that. He yeah. just locked in, hey, God's got something for my life, goes through all this stuff, and, you know, no bumpier road than the road of Joseph to to, you know, Second hand to Potiphar, but all of I mean, those, second hand yeah, to it's like Pharaoh. It's it's you know, obviously the way he handled the dream and expressing that dream yeah. was you know was out of immaturity at the beginning. Sure, right? he couldn't, and I feel like all of these steps help solidify things in him that would prepare him to sustain the platform that God ultimately had designed for him. And right. I think for me, it's it's always reminding myself, like, be careful what you, what you push for. Like, do you have the character? I mean, you and I have both seen people get absolutely things too fast. Yeah. 
and yeah. they get a promotion or they get into a position that they've been hoping for or from afar looks sexy and they yeah. want to get it yeah and then they land in that job whether it's corporate yeah. church wherever athletic team yeah and they don't realize all of the stuff that comes with that notoriety yeah. Yeah. or platform or job or position yeah and they really don't possess the integrity or character to sustain it long haul yeah and i think that that for me was a big eye-opening thing early on in ministry was if god has it for me it's going to come to me yeah. like crush the room that i'm in right now right and allow the other the door to knock and a door to open and until that happens keep crushing the door the the room that i'm in right right and i think that's been my path up to this point is just trying to be faithful with what god has put in my hands and allowing opportunity to come to me yeah and when i'm ready when god has done shaping me for that season and i'm prepared to take on the next it's right. gonna come that's good. and my pastor's a, a, i mean he he lives that so for right. me i i feel a little bit uh like i've had a close-up advantage because sure. i've watched him live his life that way where right. he's just taught me by walking through his leadership journey staying in his lane right not pushing not not going for after things but just being very very focused on what god has called him to do and all of these massive opportunities open up and come chasing him down and that to me was just like wow if i just stay focused yeah. on my lane do what i do these things will come my way well and you know, you you saying that that's things that that I've learned through talking to Torin, being on staff, talking to you. The the fact that he allows people to speak in, uh, you know, I mean, he's had some very big people, and I, I say when I say big people, I'm talking about big personalities okay. that have been part of Lakewood right. through the years, and he's never been intimidated by that. Right, like he's been like, okay, well, they bring something to the table that. And and that's one of the things that my dad has always said is he's always like, look, I'm not out here trying to look at every weakness that I have <clears throat> and try to make that stronger. What I try to do is surround myself with people who are strong in those areas mm -hmm. that I'm weak. Mm -hmm. My dad is not going to be, you know, tech savvy. Right. Okay. He's just not. <laughs> But that's fine. Yeah. Because we have people Absolutely. that are on staff that are great with that. Yeah. So when they come and speak to him about something, he's not like, oh, well, you tell me I don't know how to do tech. Right. He's right. just going, oh, okay, well, let, let's do that then. Sounds yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so I think that speaks volumes to me to a good leader to be able to surround yourself yes. with people like that and then be able to take things, input that they have and say, well, let's apply that. I'm not intimidated by the fact that you're bringing me something that I don't know or understand. Right. Fine. Let's right. do that. Right. You know, and I mean, his his strength was in broadcasting at the very beginning. Right. 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 So, so you know, I think we all have those strengths, but surrounding yourself with people that can add to that. Yes. You know, and be open to them telling you, hey, maybe this is something we should do. Maybe this is something that we should do. And I, I think a lot of people, obviously, they don't get to see him at that level. Right. Um, the only reason I know about these things is because we've been able to talk about them. Yeah. Torrin's been able to tell me about them. And so yeah. I've been able to see, you know, Pastor Joel in a completely different way than I think everybody gets to see him, you yeah. know, on social media or right. on TV where it's just like, you know, everybody has their preconceived notions of who someone is. And the fact of the matter is we don't know who someone is till you get to be around them, till you yes. get to know them. And what I've found is that he is he is very congenial. He's very down to earth, like the times that we've met him. Yes. Uh <laughs> you know, he's playing with my kids. Yeah. You know, uh yeah. uh she uh 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 Oh my lord, my her name just slipped my mind. Um uh Pastor Joel's wife, Victoria. Uh, Victoria, Victoria, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Uh so Victoria, the last time that we met them, we were there for the New Year's uh service. Yes. Or the Christmas Eve service. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh she just went on and on about Lily, you know, yeah. my daughter. Yeah, and yeah. she was like, She is so beautiful, you know. She was over there playing with the kids and all this kind of stuff. And I and honestly I was like, you know, I wish other people could see this sometimes because people people look at people often 
and prejudge them totally. on the yeah. things that they see. And they don't know what people are doing on their private time. They don't know that people are, are real, yeah. that they have real feelings, that they yeah. have things that are going on in their families and, yeah. and that sort of thing. Yeah. I, I think we have to be careful about doing that. And yeah. we're, we're all guilty. Yeah. We're all guilty. I'll look at somebody and be like, man, that guy, I just don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, and, and I have to check myself. Absolutely. I've, I've got to go, wait a second. I don't know him. Yeah. You know, just, just from what I see, because he's got, you know, 10 million followers or, or because he's doing this in this huge arena. I don't know. I don't know yeah. who this guy yeah. is. And I think that's for me, you know, part of, part of what you'd, what you'd started off this, this idea about serving someone else's vision. It's easy to do when, when you're following a leader like Pastor Joel. Yeah. who is very normal. That's yeah. what I like to call normal. Yeah. You know, like very down to earth, very yeah. down to earth, humble, high character, high integrity, um, empowering is all get out. Um, when you follow someone like that, it's easy to serve that vision. Sure. You know, I think most of us have served other people. I mean, I've, I've served other leaders and I've been under other leaders besides Pastor Joel. Now he's my direct report, but it wasn't always the case at Lakewood. I was reporting right. to other people. Right. But it's easy to do that when you're when you're following someone. The hard part is I, I like to say submission begins when agreement ends. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, yeah, it's easy to submit when you agree yeah. with 100% of yeah. what your leader is saying. The hard yeah. part is, is when you go, uh, I don't know yeah. about yeah. that move. Oh, I don't know good. if I yeah. would do that. And what makes submission easy even when you disagree is when you see the heart right and you see character and the humility right and you go okay god i may not understand this decision whether it's pastor joel whoever sure but i know his heart i know you've placed me here i know i'm called here to serve this house and the vision of this house and so we'll walk it out and that's where god changes me right and you know if the circumstance isn't changing it's because god wants to change me yeah. And that's where I have to adapt. I have to submit and adjust. But we could, I could go on and on and honor the kind of a leader, the kind of man, pastor, husband, father he is. It's just been a real honor to get to serve him. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I think, you know, the the other thing, and, and I agree. Like I said, I've had opportunity to be around them several times. And, you know, it it impressed me the way that he was very down to earth. You know, when I when I saw him this last time, he gave me a hug. Hey, man, you know, so good to see you again. And, you know, it it, it was genuine. It wasn't put on. It, it was genuine. Yeah. And you can feel the difference yeah. between put on and genuine because I've had both. Yes. And, uh, but but you you said this too, and this is something that. Can I add this? He'll crush you in tennis. Oh, And he will maybe out bench press you. I bet. No, I'm kidding. I, I mean, no, I had read at one time that he benches like. Yeah, he can put up. He'll put up 225 seven, eight times. And you know, you would not think it because I'll tell and you, the, the first time I met him, I was like, I couldn't believe how much bigger than... Like, yeah. he's, he's stout. Oh, but like I, he, yeah, you can tell he's in shape. Yeah, he's in he's in good shape. We've all seen the TMZ <laughs> photo. It's real. <laughs> he's ripped. Uh, I, now I'm going to have to go look that up because I don't think I've seen it. But He's ripped. Uh, let me say this, though. Um you know, I, this is something that I recently spoke to our leaders about and, and something that I've been also thinking about in my own life is just the importance of obedience. Yeah. Uh, not obedience because I agree. You know, that, that's what you were talking yeah, about. Yeah. But obedience because it's the right thing to do, to yeah. be obedient. I mean, the Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah, come on. So, you know, it's important for us to be obedient to those. There's another scripture be obedient to those that have the rule over you, right? Right. Uh, all, all these things, but it can be difficult. That can be challenged many times. And the thing that we've got to do, I think, in leadership, because I'm also, I, I have somebody over me, and it's my own dad. Mm-hmm. So I, there are times with mm-hmm. me that I have to go, he's my dad, but he's also my leader. And there's times that I just got to go, I just got to <laughs> zip it up and go, all right, you know, yes, sir. Because we don't agree. I, I, we you don't agree on yeah, every single yeah, thing. Yeah. But there's times, and recently I told him this. He said, I know you don't agree with me. And I said, I, I, I don't, but it's not about that. This is about, this is what you feel is the right thing to do. And so that's what we're doing. That's huge for you. And well, it's got to be a challenging 
It is, it is, but I, I also didn't get to that place overnight, Nick. You know, I, I mean, I made, I made detours from, you know, from my walk with God. I made decisions in my life that took me down paths I'm not proud of, and and had things that happened in my life that kind of beat all that out of me. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's there's times that we just get, we just get. Yep. I mean, the 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 mallet comes out, and sometimes we just get tenderized. And and I had that happen in my life. Some of it by my own doing. Yeah. Some of it by leadership. I yeah. mean, I had leadership in my life that didn't treat me the way that I should have been treated, and and had things like that. But there were there were always times in my life that I had to come back and go, okay, but what about me? Because I can't control other leaders. Mm-hmm. I can't control how people do in their lives. Yep. But the thing that I can control is what I do with mine. Yeah. And it's my responsibility to be obedient. It's my Great. responsibility to to fall in line under the umbrella of leadership that I'm under. And and I think it can be challenging for guys because we all have, and we'd be lying if if we said otherwise, we all have dreams and we have things in our lives where we're like, man, I feel maybe God is pushing me to this at some point, or maybe God has this for my life. But I think it's important to do it in the right time. Yes. And this, this, and I'm not just trying to throw out every scripture I know, but you know the other scripture says a man's gift will make room for itself. There it is. So I think sometimes people catch themselves trying to make room for their own gift mm. when they need to let that gift make room for itself. So good. And let God move them into the place that they need to be. Look, if Joseph would have rushed it, he would have never been in place to save he his would've. family from famine. I mean, that's what ended up happening. He had the opportunity to save his own family because he was patient and he waited for the process of God. Yep, there it is. And there's things in our lives the same way. I think sometimes we get we we miss opportunities because we're pushing our own agenda. Bingo. When God's saying, "If you'll wait, yes. If you'll just sit and wait on the Lord, then I'll renew your strength." That's it, man. You know. And I think the the one thing that that triggered in my mind was guard. Like when you say you can't control others, what they're doing, but you can control, you can control your response. Yeah. And to me, I've learned my heart is my responsibility. Proverbs says, guard your heart. Yeah. You have to guard your heart. I can't expect Pastor Joel to guard my heart, my wife to guard my heart. That's good. My good friends to guard my heart. Like I have to steward my heart. I have to submit and check my heart. Humble yourself. Like you yeah. said, I, I've had times where God's humbled me. Yeah. You know, he's used people to humble me or I can wake up and go, all right, I need to humble myself. Yeah. I need to guard my heart. I need to be the, the if there's one thing I'm going to steward the best, it's got to be my heart. And I think that's from it flows everything. And, you know, it, I, that can be a whole nother topic of conversation as it relates to, sure. you know, the, to me, I, I feel like staying in your lane is a byproduct of maintaining your heart and maintaining the purity of your heart and staying locked in and being content. And, you know, again, Pastor Joel, what I've learned from him is that idea of staying in your lane. I got into a, a season for a long time where all of my peers were starting churches. Yeah. And everyone was like, yeah. when are you going to start your church? Peer pressure. When are you going to start yeah. your church? And I'm flipping yeah. on Instagram, this church plant, this church plant, this church plant, which are awesome things. Oh, absolutely. And they were called to do it. But yeah. for me, it was like, man, am I missing it? Should I be doing this? Right. So this is the natural like church process, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. youth pastor, young adult yeah. pastor, yeah. now go be your own, you yeah. know, lead the church, but yeah. pastor. And, and I just, I fiercely fought like to stay true to my my heart, what God had put in my heart, the vision I was to build, which was Pastor Joel and Lakewood, and stayed the course. Now, I will continue to do that until something else comes right. into my heart. At this point, it's like I'm 100% doing that. That's the lane God has called me to do. And what's amazing is all of these things that I could see uh, myself doing when I, or if I were to plant a church, right. I'm able to do now. Right. You right. know, whether it's communicate, right. whether it's culture build, whether it's missions, yeah. whatever. I'm, I have mu- influencing music. Like, it, I'm able to do all of that. Yeah. And just, I'm just grateful I didn't chase things 
that looked alluring because everyone else was doing it, but I stayed locked in and now I'm just able to do it and I'm learning so much. I'm growing, I'm becoming um, so much and I'm just grateful I locked in. It didn't. Yeah. Well, and, and I think, but I, again, I think a lot of people fall into that peer pressure of going, man, all my friends, you know, I went to Bible college, so I had friends that were like, they were doing all this before I was, and it was like, man, why, why, am, why am I not doing these things? And I remember we had a guy one time that was w- within the church, uh, had a prison ministry, a very successful prison ministry, sp- speak to over, you know, 150 guys at a time, baptizing 30 guys, you know, all this stuff. And then he wanted to go start a church, though, or, or he actually wanted to go take a church that had like 25 people in it. And it's like, wait a second, you're ministering to more people than that right now. And again, it was because of peer pressure. It wasn't because right. I feel like this is what God wants me to yeah. do. But it's like you're ministering to more people and baptizing more people <laughs> than some of these pastors are, are baptizing right. in a month. Yes, you're doing it in one Sunday, uh-huh. you know, one service, uh, one time there in the prison ministry. And so it's really easy for us to not even see what God's doing through us because we're looking out here so going, good, yeah, but there's something so much bigger out here. So good. If we lock into what we're doing here, we can see that you're able to impact yeah. millions of yeah. people, yeah. you know, on a weekly basis when if you go start a church plant, no offense, that's probably not going to happen. Right, you know, right. I mean, and that's not that's not speaking to your influence. That's just speaking to the the truth of the way things are. You're you're in this position again, where you're being able to speak into all these things when you wouldn't be able to do that yeah. any other way. And I think to to you know, like like you said, success is obedience. It's it's try. It's this is what God has called me to do. You know, I think yeah. guys who are planning churches, and you know, you know, you have friends. We both have friends Absolutely. who've done it, and they're and they're crushing it. And that's what God had called them to do. They're that's what success is all about. And they have the grace to do it. Yeah. And they're satisfied and fulfilled doing yep. that. And I think that's the scariest part is just when, like you said, you begin overlooking what you have and chasing after something that looks alluring yes, absolutely. or it's because everyone else is doing it and it's the next thing. And it's like, man, you just got to be diligent about guarding your heart, focusing on what lane you're supposed to be in during that season and that's because that's what God's going to breathe on. That's what he's giving yeah. you the grace to do. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's. Well, and it's I, I don't want to sit here and act like it's all about the numbers. I'm not saying, you know, guys that, that are planting churches that have 150, 200 people yeah. are insignificant. You know, my deal is what we have to do in the right place that we have to be is in his perfect will, mm-hmm. whatever that is. Mm-hmm. There is somebody that's called to a town of 300 people, yep. you know? There are people that are called to these places, uh, missions field being a great example of that. You know, I know we went over to Germany one time and we're in some services, didn't have many people there. You could feel the oppression in that country wow. when you went. And it was like to them, they had great success at that number yeah, because it was so difficult yeah, to start man. a church there. So to even have that many people that were coming was like a huge thing, you know. So we can't compare ourselves among ourselves, right. you know. We can't look at that and go, "Well, man, they're not really doing anything." Right. Well, you go to Germany and try to start a church; <laughs> yeah. it's not easy, you know. So, so I, I think as long as we are staying in the perfect will of God, first of all, He's going to bless it, and that we're going to see great things happen. And especially when, like you said, I love this that. If you support someone else's dream, yeah, God will make yours come. Yeah, true. and I That's, just staying faithful. You know, the the again, the environment and the context I'm in, I've learned so much from, and just what God has done through Lakewood and through the Osteen yeah. family, and I've been so fortunate to learn and take a lot of life notes. You know, John Osteen, like it started with ninety people in a feed store, ninety people in a feed store here wow. in Houston, and there was a season where for twelve years. It was 200 people, and yeah. John Osteen just stayed faithful. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this wasn't yeah. an overnight success. No. It's not like no. you snap your fingers, and now no. we're in the compact center, and yeah. we're reaching the world. It's No, this started with 90 faithful people setting up chairs right. in a feed store, sweeping the floor. Then there was a period of 12 years, you know, where it was, you know, a couple hundred people. Yeah. Could have quit. 
Yeah. Could have looked around, could have scrolled on social media. Yeah. If it was, yeah. you know, active then. Yeah. And it's like, he just stayed the course, you know, and it's just like, that's, that's the thing I've learned from is like staying faithful. Yeah. Staying yeah. planted, yeah. staying fixed on what God's called you to do. And then over time, there wasn't any magic pill. There wasn't any right. like magic right. strategic right. move. It was God breathed on a group of people that were just staying faithful. Opportunities came, Compact Center came, Pastor Joel stepped out from being a kid. He would go and set out his dad's outfit. You talk about serving another dream and God yeah. will bring your dream to you. Yeah. He would set his dad's outfit on Saturday night, go to his house, because you said behind the scenes production, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Set out tie, suit, make sure it all matched perfectly so his dad would look good when he would get up to preach. Yeah. And he would go stand behind the scenes and make sure everything looked fantastic. Little did he know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, and that, and, then, and, and then he, his first sermon would be preached wearing his, wearing dad's, his dad's shoes. shoes. Like when when I when I heard that story, I was like, man, that's that's just. It, but it's like, are you willing to do that for so many years? Right. Right. You know, I, I, that, well, those the are the, answer, <laughs> the answer is most people aren't. I mean, let's just be honest. Yeah. I, the, you know, most people aren't. But you know, I, hopefully, this will encourage people today to to do the task that God has put before you. Yes. No matter what it looks like, I think a lot of times people look at it and go, "This is insignificant." Nothing is insignificant in the kingdom of God. Yeah. I mean, we're the body of Christ. So you pull off this fingernail right here, my whole body's going to feel it. I promise you, you know? Yeah. And so it's like every part of the so body good. is important, and mm -hmm. we need every part of it. You know, everything works together. Um, and so you have to have that in the kingdom of God. But I feel like sometimes people go, well, because I'm not Sing. on the platform, yes. or I'm not singing, or I'm not speaking, I'm not doing this. It's all flowing through the same mm -hmm. conduit and you could by e which people you could even say with the body touched. analogy the most vital organs aren't seen yeah you know my That's heart true. my brain yeah veins yeah are, you know it's like so don't get it twisted like some of the most vital you know parts of our bodies aren't seen by, by the masses so yeah. just because like you said you're unseen doesn't mean you're insignificant well, we're going to have to wrap this up because you're going to sit here and just drop truth Let's... on us. All, all, I'm just following all, your lead. All day. Um, we're, I'm going to have to have you come back love so to. we can talk about I'd some more to. of this and we can laugh. And, oh, yeah. And I'm sure we'll have more stories to share in, in the meantime. <laughs> but seriously, man, thank you for taking the time an honor. to come and do this. Um, you know, I appreciate you. what you're doing. I, I love you and your family. You are great people. And you're genuine people, too. And, and I, I think... You know, one of the things that I've noticed about Pastor Joel, for instance, is a lot of these other guys, I'm talking about a lot of other guys who you would consider mega pastors, there are, there's chinks in their armor, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And it seems like all through the years, he has stayed headstrong. You know, he stayed very consistent. There's not things tarnishing his name. I mean, his, his character yeah. is beyond reproach. And to me, uh, that that's that's a great thing to say about somebody. You're in that same boat. You, you. you guys you guys are great people. Love Likewise. and appreciate you. It's an honor to be on here. Appreciate the friendship. Yeah. And uh, we got to go fishing Let's soon. Let's do it. Thank each and every one of you for tuning in. Make sure that you tune in. Every Tuesday or Wednesday, we drop a new episode. Share this, like it, go on YouTube and check it out. Click the notification bell so you'll know when new content drops. You can check us out on Instagram at Podcast underscore. Check us out on Facebook at Podcast. Uh, go follow Nick Nielsen on That's Instagram. Right. Yeah, He's got to get those followers up, so <laughs> keep following him. <laughs> Might find some fishing picks. Might find some fishing some picks. Might even see me on there hey, with man, the gator. Who know. knows? Thank you, everybody. Have a great week. <laughs> Love you guys, and thanks for the support.